aren't you glad for God's grace and favor and the blessing of His love that He has for you? I tell you what, God just loves you. Hallelujah. And His grace. Oh, hallelujah. I, you know, there's something about grace, and we've got to have a good understanding of it. Uh, read with me Ephesians chapter 2 and uh, verse 8. <clears throat> it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So in other words, God's grace is, he has the grace. We've got the faith. Come on. The good news is that grace is a gift. It's a gift. It's not earned or deserved. You, you don't deserve His salvation. You don't deserve this grace that He has given to you. But by His grace. Come on. Hallelujah. His grace is a gift. Our response to that gift is a positive response of receiving it. Receiving that gift and saying, Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, I receive everything you've done, everything you've done, everything you did on that cross, hallelujah. You know, today's religious system uh, didn't teach what Paul taught. They, they, they teach, uh, you know, a little bit of grace mixed with the law. And, you know, and how God, you know, it, sometimes we, we, uh, we get involved with it. I mean, Hollywood does that. Hollywood uh, you know, it, it, I, I tried to be good, you know, and we're, we're good, and I was a good person, and, and I believe uh, uh, the Archangel Gabriel, uh, uh, you know, or St. Peter is going to let me in the heaven because, and, and it's all about works. Every movie you watch, it talks about works. It, it lines right up with that religious system. It's not by your works, lest any man should boast. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Paul didn't teach the law. Now Paul, I mean, he was, he was the Pharisee of the bunch. He was, he, he was, he was uh, you know, he wasn't a fisherman. He wasn't a tax collector. He was, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. And what was he teaching? He was teaching grace. Hallelujah. The revelation of grace came through Paul. Hallelujah. We've got to understand this. We're going to understand it today. Hallelujah. We don't need to mix grace with the law. We need, to, we, we need to mix grace with faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Do you know that the book of Romans, and we're going to go, I, I'm going to do it a little bit different today. I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to just teach some things chapter by chapter. I want, you to, I want, I want this to get in you. I, I, don't want, I don't want us to just, well, that was good, and then we move on. We've got to get this so deep down in our spirits so we don't act the way we used to act. Amen? Amen. Well, I've got to hop on, you know, one leg three times and, and hold a cross in my hand and, and hold some beads and, and then God forgives me and we've <laughs> got all these, all these little things that people do. I know it's not you, but I mean, you know, there's people out there who've got these little things that, that oh, we've got to, you know, we've got to, uh, immediately do this and that and the other, uh, or we're going to hell. How many know you're already born again? If you're born again, you're already a child of the king. You're already seated in heavenly places. You're already blessed going in, blessed going out. You are not concerned anymore about your salvation you're in. Amen. Amen. You've got, you've got whew, such a, 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 a wonderful wonderful grace that God's given to you, and you've got to know it. You've got to know you've been saved. Now, all the other things, amen, in the Christian walk have to line up with some things, amen. But as far as your salvation goes, if you're born again, it's done. Paid for. By the blood. He's done it all. Come on. He did it. Lest any man should boast that you did it. You didn't do nothing. <laughs> you didn't climb up on that cross with him. No, he did it all. Hallelujah. And Paul teaches us this. Paul brings this out so clearly. So go with me to Romans. Hallelujah. Do you know in Romans, grace is mentioned 24 times. Grace is mentioned 24 times. Hallelujah. That, that, I mean, that, that's... 
That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, considering that grace it wasn't mentioned much in any other type of situation. Grace is really something that has to do with Christianity. It has to do with what Jesus did. And Romans is, is the Ph.D. of Paul that he came out and he did his... Uh, uh, I mean, you know, when I did my Ph.D., when I, when I did mine for uh, uh, my doctorate, I had to come up with... with uh, I, I did a whole thing on covenants. And it had to be my course of study. And so I kept studying the covenants. And how many know there was lots of covenants? There's not just Old Testament, New Testament, Old Covenant, New Covenant. There was the covenant that God made with Adam, the Adamic covenant. Then there was the Adamic covenant. Then there was the Noahic covenant. Then there was the, uh, you know, Davidic covenant, Mosaic covenant. There's been lots of covenant covenants with man. And I had to search that all out, and then I had to write a book on it. <laughs> Well, I didn't write a book. Well, I did, but it, I mean, you had to, you had to, you have to write. Uh, I mean, your uh, I always blank on that. Uh, now, no, thesis is masters, dissertation. I can, for some reason dissertation I always. I should just remember dessert because there you go. And, but a dissertation, man. It, it's it, it's a it's a scholarly scholarly long thing you got to do it and it really is a book. Well, that's what Paul did concerning grace, and it's called Romans. Hallelujah! So turn with me to Romans chapter one. We're going to read the whole book of Romans today. No, no, we're not. But it's good. I, I recommend it. Romans chapter one, verse sixteen. Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Let's just stop right there. Really, uh, that's a Greek uh, thing saying Christ. It, literally, he's not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah. How many know you needed a Messiah? You needed a Savior. You needed someone that would come in and pay the price. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of of the Messiah. I'm not ashamed of this gospel, this good news. Now the word good news, gospel means good news, but this word gospel is not, it's not just good news. Gospel was a very rare word. Uh, it wasn't used anywhere until this time. Gospel literally was a word, you know, we would just, well that's glad tidings or, oh that's good news. Well it is. But literally, it means extreme good news. Extreme. Some, some that you wouldn't believe unless you trusted the one saying it. This is good news. Hallelujah. And this good news that he's trying to get across to you, and we find this, uh, if you look at the book of Acts, and we're not going to go there, but the book of Acts, uh, chapter 20, verse 24, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, it says it's the gospel of grace. The gospel of grace that is extreme good news is that you don't have to pay the price. You don't get, have to be judged. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Woo. I owed a debt. I could not pay. He paid a debt. I did not owe. He did not owe. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Uh, anyway, uh, I actually got through that song this time. Anyway, uh, you didn't know you were getting a concert. Glory to God. Anyway, so that song literally, Amazing Grace, that is the whole thing. And people sing that song don't even know what they're singing. They sing that song and they don't even understand. We've got amazing grace, a gospel that is so unbelievable. He paid a debt he did not owe. It was my debt. It was what I did. It was my sins. How many know all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God? How many know that without a Savior, without a Messiah, you're going to hell? Guess what? You're not going to hell. 
matter of fact, you're already seated in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, that's good news. That's extreme good news. Yeah. That's what we have. That's what we have. I love that. Now notice, it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, of the Savior. For it is the power of God to salvation. This gospel of grace is the power that gets you saved. This is the power that, that not only salvation, the, the word soteria, that word salvation in the Greek, it means to be saved, it means to be healed, it means to be delivered, it means, it means all of the things that Adam lost in the fall, we got back through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to earn it. I'm not trying to get some brownie points with God to somehow, you know, get to heaven. We're already there. Come on. Hallelujah. That's great, extreme, good news. Glory to God. Amen. Everyone, to everyone, to everyone, notice what it says. It says, uh, the power of God is salvation to everyone that believes. Grace, faith. Grace, that's God's part. That's His gift. What He did upon the cross. Faith, that's our part. Faith is so important that we, we've got to understand faith. Faith is not just some, well, we, you know, we're a faith church. No, we're a church that has got to get faith in you because everything works by faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. Faith is what gets you through the day. Faith is what causes you to believe that something good is about to happen. Amen. You rise up in faith, there's nothing you can't do. <laughs> you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Glory to God. And so we've got to get that deep down in our spirit. Amen? Now notice verse, uh, and it says, to the Jew first and, and to the Greek. How many know that God... So love the world, not just the Jews. He loves everyone. Hallelujah. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from the law to law. Doesn't say that, does it? It says from faith to faith. It says, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. We live by faith. Everything we do, we do by faith. Hallelujah. It's not revealed from law to law. That might, that might have been the way it was through Moses, but we are no longer under the law. We are under grace. Hallelujah. Now, a lot of people, they get messed up with this, and they, they think, well, you know, uh, I don't like that grace message. Well, then rip the book of Romans out of your Bible, because that's what this is all about. Go with me over here to chapter 2 now. Well, I'm just going to say this. Uh, chapter 2, verse 4. It says, uh, the goodness of God leads us to repentance. The goodness of God leads us to repentance. God is good. Old Roberts used to say, you know, something good. Isn't that something good's going to happen to you? Yeah. You know, uh, and they got mad at him. His denomination threw him out. You can't say God is good. His word says he's good. How, how many would like to rather go with the word? Amen? Amen. I'd rather go with the word. God says, he, you know, the word says he's good. And his goodness, and that word goodness is his grace. It is his said. It is his loving kindness. It is his covenant, his eternal covenant of love towards you. It is something that is so wonderful, so glorious, that he says this goodness is what leads you to repentance. Now, hitting you over the head and telling you you're a sinner is not what God talks about. Now, there's some people, it says, it says, need that because they're not going to, you know, that's just the way they are. But that's not, that's not the way God is. God wants to love on you and you receive that love. Amen? If you start in a love relationship, your relationship will always be a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? 
But if you start with a sin relationship, where it's a sin mentality, your relationship will always be works. It will always be led by, by trying to earn God's uh, approval. When I was the host of TBN in Tulsa, we used to get different people calling in for prayer. And I remember this one day, there was an associate pastor of a very large church. It was more of a denominational, non-denominational. I don't know how these non-denominational churches that are not non-denominational, I mean, they're a denomination. They call themselves, de <clears throat> anyway. Uh, it, it was a large church, and the associate pastor called in for prayer because he had backslidden. Now, I'm not saying his name, and I'm not saying the church, so I can tell you the story. And... Uh, <laughs> He, he had, uh, you know, he had called in because he, he needed prayer for salvation. This is an associate pastor of a very large church. Why? Because that church taught that. And there were people at that church would go up every Sunday, every Sunday morning and got saved again. How many know you need to just get saved once? And then your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You become a child of God. Hallelujah. And so, the goodness of God, not condemnation. Uh, I know most churches, a lot of churches, not most, but a lot of churches, they preach condemnation. So that you feel so bad, you, you get saved. Problem is, you've got to keep doing that. And they got to keep getting saved, and they got to keep doing that, that model, which is not grace. That's the law. And we have to have a good understanding. Amen? Turn with me over here to uh, Romans 3. We, one, two, now three. Glory to God. We're going to go right through this. Romans chapter 3. A little different this morning, but we've got we've to we've know this. Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Now, we know that what things soever the law says, it says to them who are under the law, <laughs> that every mouth may, may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law was made so that we would understand what sin is. But now, everybody say now. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith. Glory to God. Which is by faith of Jesus Christ to all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know that word justify also means redeemed. Justified, redeemed. You're redeemed of the curse, redeemed of the curse of the law. You are freely, being justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Hallelujah. <coughs> to declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believes in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No. But by the law of faith. The law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds or works of the law. Did you see that? That's grace. You're justified. You've been redeemed by grace. Grace, the literal word grace, uh, it is charis is a gift. That word we we all you know we think of charismatics. We think of gifts. You know the ones that move in the gifts. The gifts literally are the empowerment 
of grace. <laughs> it's what we get so that we can get back to where we were before the fall. It is the grace of the gifts that God keeps giving. Hallelujah. And literally, it is His favor. Unmerited favor where He just loves on you in spite of your... I'm not looking at anybody. In spite of your messy self. <laughs> he just loves on you. He cares about you. He, he is love. That's one of the biggest, biggest things inside me is, is the love message. The love of God. Woo, I, I teach that a couple times a, a year. I just get into that. Why? Because His love brought forth the grace. He is love. His love caused His only begotten Son to go upon the cross. His love for you in spite of what you've done in your life. God loves you. Hallelujah. You know, that's become a cliche within Christian circles. You know, God loves you. Yeah, yeah. God loves you. He really does. He loves you so much, and you're going, Lord God, forgive me, forgive me. Now, I'm not saying you don't, you don't ask the Lord for forgiveness. Absolutely. Amen. But how many know when you got saved, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you shall confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth, you shall be saved. In other words, a confession from your mouth. Now you notice it didn't say in Romans, every, every good church out there, oh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. I like Romans 8, word of faith, amen. But <laughs> it, says, it says confess, it didn't say confess your sins. Oh, you're getting off on a, on a branch now, Pastor. No, it said to confess Jesus. You confess what He did. You confess what He did on the cross for you. you con not what you've done, what He's done. You confess. Of course we confess our sins. Don't, don't try to think I said something else. But how many know Romans 10, 9 and 10 is talking about confessing Jesus? You confess Jesus. You confess that He paid the price. You confess that His blood was shed. You confess that He did it all for you. A vicarious death. You should have died. You should have been judged. But He was judged and your sin was placed upon Him. Hallelujah. So we got we to have a good understanding of this. Amen. All have sinned. Fall short of the glory of God. But you're justified. You're justified by grace through faith. Go with me to Romans chapter 4. Go down here to verse 15. Because the law works wrath, <laughs> for where no law is, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. You can't transgress the law now because there is no law. It's been done away with. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure. To all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. How many know Abraham was before the law? As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who makes alive the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. That's faith. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And be not weak in faith, he considered, Abraham considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and, and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, He was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed, hallelujah, to Him for righteousness. Now it was not written for His sake alone that it was imputed to Him, but for us also, for us also. If we believe on Him, Jesus, Glory to God. If we believe on Him uh, that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. If we believe, 
You know, when you think about all the different mess out there, you know, uh, some of the main denominations, they teach Calvinism. Calvinism teaches that uh, <laughs> you, God picked a certain few, certain ones to be saved and, and, and he picked the rest to be condemned. And really you have no say in it. He did it before the foundation of the world. Half of you in this church are condemned. That's Calvinism. Taught by Baptists and Methodists, all kinds of denominational churches. Now I'm an Arminianist. Hallelujah. We believe in free will. And we believe that, you know, the, the biggest scripture they got is John 3.16. They love John 3.16. And yet John 3.16 says, For God so loved... It doesn't say half of the world. It says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, he's saying, I, 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 I want, I, I, it, it literally says, he doesn't want any to perish. His love is for everyone. Why? I don't know how you get mixed up in Calvinism. I, it, it, it's just not God's uh, character. God loves everyone. You're his child. Now, you make the choice whether or not by faith you're going to follow him. Amen. And we walk by faith. The first thing you do by faith is get saved. And once you're saved, you're in. But everything you do from that point on in the kingdom is by faith. Getting healed is by faith. Getting, getting pros prosperous is by faith. Getting delivered is by faith. Everything you do works by your confession of faith. Hallelujah. You got saved by faith, you get healed by faith, you, you, you get delivered by faith, you set free by faith, you, you have a great day by faith, <laughs> hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. That's why we preach faith, hallelujah. Glory to God. Abraham understood that. Abraham, Abraham got a hold of this. Abraham just believed God, and it was accounted him for righteousness way back before the law, way back in the Old Testament. And yet it's the same thing for you today you are made righteous by faith through His grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And we just receive that free gift. And that free gift of salvation is given to you. Glory to God. We've got to have a good understanding of that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to chapter 5 now. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now number 5. Chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, Justified, not by the law, justified by faith, we have peace. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We, we have, we've been re reconciled with the Father. Amen. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Justified, redeemed by faith access by faith into the favor and blessing of God. Hallelujah. You have access into this grace, or the word grace means favor, a merited favor, uh, unearned favor. You're, you have access every day into the favor of God by faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. Well, I just don't believe God's going to bless me. Guess what? You just took yourself out of access. Well, I don't, I don't know how God's going to do it. You don't need to know how God's going to do it. He's big enough to do it. Amen. He'll do it, he'll do it right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we've got we to believe that God, we've got to believe he, He's a man of His Word, that He's not a man that He should lie, and that His Word is truth, and you can stand on every precious promise, and every promise is yes to you, and amen. amen. By faith. By believing it. By believing it. You know, well, you know, Sister So-and-so was a great woman of faith and she died. Is that really what the model of what you're going to go by? Is that really what you're going to hold on to, Sister So-and-so, that you thought was great in faith? You didn't see her on Monday. On Monday, she was freaking out. <laughs> he, he, you, you saw her on Sunday in her Sunday best. And she came in and she, oh, yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only one that knew that lady 
was God and the pastor. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but, but let me tell you something. We've got to understand. You can't put your trust in man. Man will mess it up. Put your trust in Jesus. Jesus is the only one that was perfect. Jesus is the only one that did it right. Jesus is the one you trust. And if Jesus said, by faith, you go by faith. Hallelujah. There are a lot of people preaching against faith. So many people preach against faith. It took your confession of faith to get saved. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't believe in all that. Well, then you're not saved. It's your confession of faith that gets you saved. Well, I don't believe in that confession of faith. Well, read Romans 10, 9 and 10 again, and read it five times today and five times tomorrow and five times for the rest of your life until you get it. Because you're saved by faith. Come on, somebody. You're healed by faith. You're, you're blessed by faith. But I don't know when, it's, I don't know when we're going to get blessed. <clears throat> God says now faith is. It's not based in the future. It's based in the now. God is not in time. He's in the now. Come on. <laughs> oh, we're going to get this. Amen. Hallelujah. Chapter 6. <laughs> now we're going to go somewhere. Chapter 6. 1, 2, 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? She, <clears throat> shall we continue in sin? Because we're, we're not under the law. And we got grace. <laughs> what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now that's where the grace message in some churches gets off. We now can sin. I, I saw this one church. It was called a grace church. They're down in Mesquite. Anyway, I, I went down there because I thought, well, I'm going to go visit uh, over, over that church. From time to time, I'd go visit a church somewhere, you know. And uh, I went in there, and right after praise and worship, they had everybody left the building. I thought, why is everybody leaving the building after praise and worship? I didn't know they had a 15-minute smoking break. <laughs> right after praise and worship. And... and, and, and uh, I did not return. I went. I just left. <laughs> now I'm not saying smoking can get you to hell, but you'll smell like it. <laughs> but what I'm saying here is, they were seeing that they could do whatever they wanted to do. That's that's the vibe I was picking up at that place. Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is a license to win. I got to have that copyrighted. I like that. Anyway. I've been preaching that for a long time. We've, we've got to begin to realize that, that we've got grace where we win. We've been empowered with His favor. We've been empowered with His word. We now have grace to use the word and walk in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Grace literally causes you to overcome sin. Amen. I said amen. Look what it says. Uh, verse 3. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also walk in newness of life. We, are now, we have a new nature. We're, we're not good because we're trying to get to heaven. We're not good because we're hoping one day that, that brownie buttons or brownie points, whatever you want to call it, uh, that we got enough of them, we get into the gates, and there's no gate, by the way. There is no gate. There is gates on the New Jerusalem, <laughs> but there is no gate. And St. Peter doesn't have the job, and St. Peter was not the first pope, and, that, and I'm sorry, that's just not the way it is. <clears throat> Matter of fact, Catholicism te teaches that grace is uh, the cross plus the sacraments. Grace is grace plus nothing. Did you hear what I said? Anyway, if you get to heaven and you don't see flames, you're in the right place. So we're, 
we got to get we got to get to a point where we know that we are saved we're in the book we are seated in heaven in heavenly places in Christ Jesus hallelujah <clears throat> as a matter of fact in in heavenly places is italicized it's not in the original greek it literally just means you are in heaven in Christ. In other words, you are in His body. You are the body of Christ. You're not in a lounge chair on the North 40, kind of seen with your binoculars, the throne. You're in the throne. You're seated in Him. You're seated in power and authority. You're seated in Him. When you declare and decree the word of the living God, you are decreeing it with the full authority of the throne. Hallelujah. You're His body. You're not waiting to become His body. You are His body. You're the body of Christ. Oh, I'll tell you what, this, this, <laughs> the Word of God is so good, isn't it? <laughs> it's just so good. Glory to God. Now, look what it says. Uh, it says, uh, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that the old man, your old man, is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Hallelujah. You know, the, the, the thief that was on the cross next to Jesus was, was Paul's father. A lot of people don't know that. Because Paul said, my old man was crucified with Christ. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and that hereafter we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. You're dead in Christ. You're freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Hallelujah. Whoo. For in that he died, he died to sin once. Everybody say once. Everybody say once again. But in that he lives, he lives to God. Now why did I say, say once? Because when Jesus died, he died for your sins once. Past sins, present sins, Future sins once. Did you get that? When he was on the cross, he paid for your sins, past, present, and future. They are paid for. Well, does that mean I still have to ask for forgiveness? Yeah, for you. Not for him. He already forgives you. No, you ask for forgiveness so that you put yourself back in out of condemnation. See, the enemy... Enemy works through condemnation. He comes in and says, you were bad. I tripped you and you fell. We never stop and think he's the one that tripped us. We blame ourselves. He trips us. We fall. Oh, why did I do that? No, you're supposed to rise up and say, devil, get under my feet. But what do we do? We, we, we sit there and get condemned. And we get condemned every time. And we have a sin consciousness. God doesn't want you to have a sin consciousness. He wants you to have a faith-blessed consciousness in His Word where you just your mind is being renewed to who you are and the authority of the believer and you're rising up and you know who you are and you know you've been redeemed. You've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. And so you just rise up in faith and you say, Lord, I know I sinned. I thank you, Lord, that you've already paid the price of that sin, and I thank you that, I, I, that you are just to forgive me of all sins, and I've been forgiven in Jesus' name. And, and, and it's done. It's done. You're right back in fellowship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Just like that. Glory to God. You don't have to hop on three feet. You don't have to look at three crosses. You don't have to, uh, you know, uh, watch uh, 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 Catherine Coleman on TV in the afternoon. You just have to just finish, just lay back. The reason I say that is a lot of people have all of these things. I mean, they might as well just have a rabbit's foot. 
because they, they, it's like prayer plus this, prayer plus that, prayer, you know, and I've got to do this, that, and the other. Now I'm right with God. You've already been right with God. Your sin was put into the deepest sea to be remembered no more, past, present, and future. When you ask for forgiveness, it's for you so that you are the one that puts yourself outside of fellowship. Now you put yourself back into fellowship and you move on by faith. Hallelujah. You getting this? Hallelujah. We're justified. I said we're justified by faith. Glory to God. Whew. Hallelujah. Go with me to Romans chapter 7. Now this is where <laughs> Paul kind of has a hiccup. But it's good. Romans chapter 7, verse 4. <clears throat> Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married <clears throat> to, to another, uh, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit to God. In other words, now we're yielding ourselves to God and righteousness, chapter 6, and now we're bearing fruit. How many know that when you get in the Word, you will bear fruit? You are not good because you, by your flesh. Your flesh cannot be good. You're good by the Spirit. You have a born-again spirit if you're born again. You're good. You have a new nature. Your new nature is in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Your Flesh is the old man. Your old flesh is a mess. You know, to be carnally minded, carnally minded, the word carne, that's the word meat. Carnally minded means you're a meathead. That's deep Greek right there. <laughs> but what do we do? We, we, we sit there and, and, and we try to be good. Well, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. You're not going to be good. You can't do it by the flesh. But you get in the Word. If I say the word, word. You get in the Word, the fruit of the Word. The Word is seed. The, the harvest of the Word, the fruit of the Word, will produce the new nature. You're not good by your works. You're good by what God did. He gave you the Word. When you are in the Word every day, you change. What do you change into? His image. We were created in His image and His likeness, hallelujah, for dominion. And God's giving us that back through Jesus Christ and His blood. And when we walk in Him and we walk in His Word, we will produce a new nature. Hallelujah. You won't produce it out of the flesh. You produce it out of the Spirit. Now, hallelujah. Whew. We get in this. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, <laughs> the, uh, we produced sin, which were by the law did works, uh, and it says the sufferings of sin. You know, that word motion means sufferings of sin. We, we uh, suffer through sin. Uh, which were by the law did work in our members, in our body, to bring forth fruit to death, separation from God. But now we are delivered from the law, oh, the glory, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. The letter of the law. We're no longer under the letter of the law. We're walking according to the spirit and according to grace. <clears throat> what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No. I had not... I would have not known sin but for the law. Now I know what that is. For I had not known lust except the law, and had said, you shall not covet. Are you seeing that? Go down to verse 19. <clears throat> for the good that I would, I do not. Now this is where Paul just kind of says, you know, chapter 6, I'm yielding myself by faith, glory to God. I'm going to, I'm going to yield my members, my body to righteousness. I'm going to do God's will. Hallelujah. Then chapter 7 comes along, and he says, the things I want to do, I'm not doing. <laughs> things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am. Well, what was he doing? He was realizing you're still, we're not fully 
uh, in the twinkle of an eye, our flesh is over. No, we've still got some. Our, our, our mind is being renewed by the reading of the Word to who we are now, but that's an ongoing process from faith to faith. We've got to keep going in that every day, learning who we are and what we have. If you're not learning who you are and what you have, what you're doing is religion. I went to church, now I'm, I'm saved again, and I'm, I got right with God again this week, and now I can make it through the week. And you're not making it through the week, because the following Sunday you're just on your knees again. Oh, I'm, I'm such a mess. Well, that's where Paul was at. Paul had to get a revelation, and he's revealing what we go through. Are you seeing this? <clears throat> now notice, it says, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, uh, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. Are you seeing this? It's that sin that's dwelling in me, and it's that condemnation that keeps me in that. Verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God. Now this, now this is where you start getting some revelation when you start thanking God. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. There is no, there is no chapter no chapter uh, divisions in the original Greek. In the original writings, there is no chapter 1, chapter 2. Cha chapter 8, verse 1 goes with this. So let's read it that way. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin, there is therefore now con no condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. That are in the Messiah. That are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. If you're walking after the flesh and you keep doing it the old way. You will find yourself asking the Lord for forgiveness four times a day. But if you begin to walk in the spirit. And you start getting in the Word and allow the Holy... How many know that your Spirit and the Holy Spirit work together? Yeah. you got a born-again Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to work with your Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the paraclete, the one that comes alongside the helper. The Holy Spirit is coming along to help you with this. You're not on this alone. Your flesh cannot do it. Religion says you got to get better. True Christianity says you got to get in the Word. Because the Word is seed and it produces your fruit of righteousness. Hallelujah. And so you just keep getting that Word and keep getting that Word and keep getting that Word and keep getting that Word. And you, you start your day getting in the Bible. How many know you should have a Bible on your nightstand? Start your day in the Word. Throughout the day, have a little pocket Bible or, or put it on your phone. I have it on my phone. Just, just you know, and, and you can just dial up some word and get that word in you. Whatever you're going through, find the word on that. And let that word sink into you. Your heart is the new garden. You plant the seed of the tree of life. You plant the word in your heart. In this garden. And it will produce... Out of the abundance of the mouth, the mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The confession is made unto soteria, unto everything that God has paid for. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory to God. Yeah. For those that walk after the, for those that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Somebody shout glory. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the 
flesh. Hallelujah. There's no more condemnation. There is no more condemnation. Devil immediately tries to tell you how bad you are, and you go, no, that's not what the Word says. The Word says I'm a new creation in Christ. The Word says I'm an overcomer. The Word says I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out. No, no, I'm not going to believe what you say about me. I'm going to believe what the Word says about me. You start rising up in the Word, glory to God. And now there's no condemnation. He can't condemn you anymore because you're not buying it. You know, so I, I'm not buying that anymore. I, I'm, I'm born again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. Well, what if I'm born again and I still did some bad stuff? Did you ask for forgiveness? Because God already forgave you. Past, present, and future. Did you ask for forgiveness? Yes. It's over. He puts it back under the, he puts it back into the sea of forgetfulness. That means he, he chooses to forget it. How many know God? God could remember anything. But he chooses to forgive you and forget it. He said, I'm not holding that against you. Why are you holding it against yourself? Matter of fact, most of the time, almost all the time, it's you. You're the one that's saying, well, I, I'm just not, you know, I, I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. If you only knew who you were in Christ. Hallelujah. Whew. Glory to God. I love verse 15. It says, it says uh, we're now made sons and daughters. And now we can cry out, Abba, Daddy. <laughs> Not some glad morning, now. If you're a child of the king. You're, you're royalty. You're, you're part of the royal family now. You're, you, you can cry, Daddy! <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew, you've been reconciled to the Father. You, you're not waiting to be reconciled. You are reconciled. You're redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You're redeemed of the curse. You're back in the blessing. You're back in the favor. You're back in the grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many in uh, verse 32? We did chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8. I, that's the first time I've ever done something like this. But how many know this is, this? we need this? Verse 32. Hallelujah. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. No more condemnation. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sakes, as it is written, under the law, as it is written, for your sakes we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. You're going to hell. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Somebody shout out, I'm more than a conqueror because of the grace of God, because of what He did, not because of anything I've done. He paid the price. He did it all. His blood covers me. He made me white as snow. I receive this grace through faith, believing good things, the good things of God in His Word are being produced now in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Anybody need prayer this morning? Bill. You're back. The anointing of His glory is coming on your back right there. Behold, 
There you go. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, God is so good. Amen. You feel that glory on your back? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. 